my name is Rhoda Omenya. I work at Ushahidi. Uh, that's in Nairobi, Kenya. As the slides are loading. So Ushahidi is a not-for-profit organization that empowers communities uh, through raising their voices to um, generate insights and influence change. Um, so I actually, yes, thank you. What about down here? All right, so that little X there, that's where Kenya is. Um, would anyone tell me what they think they know Kenya is famous for? Anybody? I shut it out. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I think you saw my slides. <laughs> this is exactly what you are famous for. Um, this is my personal all-time favorite, Eliud Kipchoge. Because I'm Kenyan, I'm a bit biased. So I'll say he's the greatest marathoner of all time. Um, there he is attempting for the second time to run the sub two hour marathon, which he managed in one hour, 59 minutes. Um, that's how long it takes me to wake up from the first time my alarm rings to the <laughs> sixth time. <laughs> um, he's a pretty humble guy and he has done as proud as Kenyans. He has rallied people around the sport and really taken marathoning onto a higher platform. Um, on the flip side, as Kenyans, we have also put ourselves on the map. This is in 2007 when we had the general elections. Um, so politics in Kenya is pretty divisive in terms of tribes. That's how politicians campaign. And in 2007, it was very polarized. And what happened is that after the elections were announced, the results rather, um, literally what you see in the picture, the country was in flames. Uh, neighbors turned into four, uh, friends turned into enemies. Over, one, over a thousand people were killed. Over 300,000 Kenyans were internally displaced. Um, it was the most violent um, period in Kenya. Uh, we had never experienced such violence before during an election period. So what happened is that um, a local blogger asked on her blog, is there anybody who could create a mashup of the violence and chaos that was happening in Kenya and put it on a map? So four techies came together, together with this blogger, and created this simple um, web-based platform for Kenyans to report their wherever they are. For example, I'm in Mary Ward Hall and there's fire here or we are stuck or people are coming for us. And this map was able to collect, or rather this team of four people were able to collect 40,000 reports from Kenyans. And these reports were timestamped, they were verified, triaged, and then put on the map. So those little fire emojis are the areas that were basically, in things were going down, things were burning in essence. So you could report on riots, deaths, um, looting, rape, peace efforts, basically whatever was happening. And this provided the one-stop shop for us as Kenyans to know what was happening in Kenya. Those of people who are outside and were concerned about us in Kenya to know what was happening since the media had placed uh, a ban on any sort of news going on. And they called it Ushahidi, the four people. Ushahidi means testimony in Kenya. Um, and so since then, 2008, um, we have maintained our open source nature, whereby we have been used globally around the world around 200,000 times in over 160 countries. And issues that are normally, I would say, associated with Africa, you know, low bandwidth or poor governance, this, is, this resulted in the development of Ushahidi, the tool. And we are able to give disenfranchised communities the, the tool and the modalities to raise their voices, um, to generate insights, and to influence change. So we had done this question in the morning, so we shan't do it right now. It was a slide about what is you know, happening in elections generally, or what civic tech tools need to solve. The slide which had corruption, misinformation, disinformation, so we shall just skip that. So. 2007, 2008, it was about tribalism in Kenya. Right now, 
the suggestions that we all shared in the morning about you know, corruption, misinformation, um, is what is taking place in the electoral space. And I'd like to share three examples of what uh, we see shaping the elections. So this is um, data mapping of, of openness of countries around the globe. Um, as you can see, about from Civica. Civica is a global civil society alliance. And they say that about 30% of humanity lives in closed countries. About 40% live in repressed countries. Kenya is right there living in obstructed and surrounded by a lot of repressed countries. So I don't know where you fall in in your country there. But we're not doing too good, basically, as, as a globe. Only 2% lives in open nations. So the civic space is gradually shrinking and, and slowly just being stifled. For example, in Belarus this year, there was quite a lot of political repression during their um, elections and, and their freedom of expression is being stifled there. We have Senegal that um, the government decided one day to, for the elections this year, they woke up and decided we are changing the election date. As, as Gen Z would say, the election date didn't pass the vibe check, so they felt that they really needed to move it to another date. And then, so when the citizens, Senegalese, decided to conduct a protest um, towards that, they cut off mobile internet and said, okay, let's see how you guys are going to march without knowing how to hook up and link up with each other for this. Um, Uganda, up to today, three days later, Facebook is still banned. Though I saw a tweet that apparently the government is still posting um, government updates on Facebook by VPN, so I don't know how true that is. So that's the shrinking um, civic space. This guy here, Indonesia is doing the most, I would say, in terms of um, AI, which is another influence of what we're seeing in the election space. This guy here is General Suharto from Indonesia. He died in 2008, but um, the Golka political party managed to resurrect him in a three minute um, deep fake where which garnered about 4.7 million views on X and much more on the other social media platforms. Um, this is during the Indonesian elections, which took place on Valentine's Day, very apt, I would say. Pakistanis were also not left behind. They released um, AI-generated victory speech from Imran Khan, who is uh, ex-prime minister and is also in jail. I mean, both these examples and other countries who are now using AI for um, political processes bring about a lot of questions on legal and ethical um, aspects or use of AI. And I would also pause for us to think that if we are using a dead guy and somebody in jail as our motivation for elections, um, Houston, we have a problem. We need to really rethink our political um, expressions or who we look up to politically. And thirdly, we have voter apathy. This is not anything new. These are the trends of voting in Iran. This year was their lowest voter turnout since 1979, uh, the Iranian Revolution. And this is not just a trend in Iran, but it is um, pretty much going on globally. So we are seeing a lot of old influences, such as voter apathy, but also new influences of AI um, and continued uh, shrinking of civic space in addition to the other challenges that were mentioned. All right, so for us as Ushahidi, how then are we supporting election monitoring, considering that we were born out of an election crisis? So we have a theory of change here. We recognize that as a data and uh, as a data organization that we can, are only an enabler to CSOs and NGOs that want to reach disenfranchised communities in achieving the systemic um, systems level change. So for us, we work with mission aligned partners who then use our open source platform to reach their target audiences. Um, and by doing so, we hope that you know, citizens feel more included, um, organizations are more effective, and policies are more inclusive. And because we are part of the open source community, then the open source community is strengthened. So, Specifically to elections, this is um, a map of the 
2022 election um, monitoring process in Kenya. Election monitoring using the Ushahidi platform is quite a mammoth event. So you think about it in three parts. You have the platform, we have the citizens that are reporting, and we have the response partners. Um, in the morning, Louise talked about tech not operating in a vacuum, and that's how we operate too. By ourselves, we are unable to, um, we can, you can say you're using the election, you're using the election, um, the Ushahidi platform, but if you're not having people or organizations that are able to respond to that data, then in essence, you're not, all you're doing is just being a data collector, and that's not what we want. So citizens are able to report what is happening in and around them. We change the fire emojis to um, the numbers you can see here so that you can be able to see a concentration of where the um, majority of the reports are coming from. So when citizens report to the platform, then we have response organizations. For example, we had uh, the Communications Authority of Kenya, which is a government body charged with dealing with misinformation, who would charge, take all the misinformation reports to, and they would then issue um, official or factual um, reports. We also had uh, electoral governing uh, organizations that had monitors on the ground who we'd use to verify, say, incendiary information that was being submitted and ensure that we are also publishing factual um, issues on the map. So in light of what is happening, the new emerging trends or the existing trends, how are we supporting um, election monitoring process. Remember, we want citizens to feel more included. We want organizations to be more effective and policies, organizations to be more effective and policies to be, I feel like I'm repeating the same thing. Let's start with citizens feel more included. So this is us in Nigeria, supporting the election monitoring process in Nigeria. Um, there's a research that was done that showed that uh, that's significantly correlated with an 8% increase in voter turnout. This is because that crowdsource reports generated by citizens provided officials with improved information about the functionality of local polling stations, thereby fostering greater confidence in the electoral process. So in, in short, um, Nigerian citizens were reporting uh, processes or incidences about their elections and then this information was being taken up by the response organizations, that is the official um, electoral body of Nigeria, and they were then fixing the issues in real time. And then this then, citizens were seeing that their issues are being attended to, and then encouraging more and more people to go out and vote. So essentially, we are trying to ensure that there's a feedback loop during our election monitoring processes so that citizens do not feel that they are reporting in, in a vacuum um, so, and to do this, for citizens to feel included, they need to be reached where they are. So we enable p um, citizens to report using, um, from the, if you have a smartphone, you can use WhatsApp, you can use the mobile app from in iOS and Android, but you can also use, if you have a feature phone, you can use SMS or USSD. So being included also means being able to reach you where you are with whatever tool that you have. And therefore, um, we try and make sure as much as possible, if you have a phone, then you can use the Ushahidi platform. And also being included means that whatever you report gets um, addressed, and hence us trying to ensure that we work with mission aligned partners to bring back that feedback loop. Cool. Organizations are more effective. Um, as I said before, that running an election monitoring deployment is quite a huge undertaking because once we receive reports on the platform, there's a team of digital volunteers that processes the information. There's a lot that goes into processing the information, whether it is translation or geolocation or verification. So on the left side, those are the processes that take place once a report is received. Before it is mapped onto the front, it has to undergo through all these processes. And currently, it is pretty manual. So what we are doing is that we are working with data miner to automate um, translation and geolocation. Um, we are starting with Swahili, because we are based in Kenya, so that information moves 
a bit more faster from when it is received from the citizen and it is automatically translated, automatically geolocated. If you've said I'm um, in Nairobi, then it automatically geolocates that to Nairobi so that um, organizations that are using the Ushahidi platform are able to quickly process the data without having a huge uh, human uh, manpower on the back end, but maybe just having a small component for verification of of critical info reports that are received and escalation of reports to um, response partners. The second thing that we are doing is that we are developing an election toolkit. Um, we cannot be in every country that is conducting elections. This year being the global year of elections, neither can we be there for every country forever. However, we are working on this toolkit that will enable um, CSOs and any other organization that would want to conduct election monitoring to do so um, by themselves, given our experience over the, first, over the past 16 years. Um, so that even as you use the toolkit, then you, and it's an iterative process whereby you shall give us, as you use the toolkit, you shall give us feedback and we use it to continuously improve uh, the election toolkit. We shall publish it by the end of this month. So I'd like us to go and to help us, um, my shameless plug for today is I'd like us to go to Slido, please, um, on the number 233-8930. Please put in what data gaps do you see before, during, and after elections? When you think about elections, um, what do you think is missing before, during, and after? I am not a techie, so I hope the response shall come up automatically. <laughs> uh, it's fine. As as the I have one two more minutes. So as you type that in, um, since it's a link to. Um, a slide I created, I'll get the data after this, and this data will be useful in, in creating, um, helping us improve the toolkit. And so finally, just to reiterate, what we want to do is to ensure that people everywhere can easily gather data and generate insights that help them tackle issues that matter the most to them. We want elections to matter. We want civic engagement to matter um, to citizens again. And this is what we are trying to do using the Ushahidi platform as an enabler for um, civil society organizations and other organizations using the platform. By enabling them to be seen and to be heard, then they will be encouraged to share their data. And secondly, when they share their data, then these organizations have the data that they need to inform decisions and, and policies. It's a it, cyclic nature, interdependent cyclic um, loop, so that you feel hard, then you feel able to present your views, and somebody hears your views and takes um, action on them. And finally, our community-generated data sets go into public goods that serve as a resource to improve society, such that whatever data is um, released out of elections are maintained as, as immutable public goods which you can then be able to connect the dots, which is what uh, we're hearing during the keynote. Thank you.